kind of leading or, or going back to what we talked about earlier, when I have a student come in, besides asking them a lot of questions and finding out really what they're thinking, oftentimes early on, I will have them hit putts with one arm. So I'll have them make a stroke or two and just swing the putter with one arm. And then we'll hit a few right-handed, we'll hit a few left-handed. Well, what I'm looking for is one, is there a dominant hand? Most often in this drill, I can find out their stronger hand and their weaker hand. I know right off my job will be to teach the weak hand so it's good enough to get out of the way of the good hand. So I'm, I know where I need to focus. But the big key in this drill really is have a person understand that when they, when they put the putter in one arm, now they don't need their body. They're swinging from a single joint. They're swinging from their shoulder joint. They're letting the putter swing nice, and, and usually it's very athletic. Uh, when they have both hands on the putter, it's a little trickier because now we're working off both shoulders. You know, I've joked uh, a little bit with some guys even at the show yesterday that, you know, this might have been the one little tip that I didn't always pass out before I started charging my buddies was the sensation that the person needs to come up with when they put both hands on the putter is really that the elbows react like they do in a golf swing. In the golf swing, my right elbow folds on the back swing, my left elbow folds on the follow through. Well, to have the freedom to let the putter swing and create good rhythm, when I take my back swing, my right elbow is soft enough to absorb the back swing. It has a little bit of fold and it doesn't work away from the target, it works around just like the rest of my stroke because it's on the shaft tilt. When I go through, my right elbow has a little bit of lengthening and my left elbow absorbs the follow through. So a person can work on this drill one arm at a time, then try to put them together and get that sensation of having some freedom to swing the putter head. Can we get back to the dominant arm or the dominant hand in putting? Is, should you be concerned? I mean, let's, let's keep it simple. If you were a right hand person, how many of those people are right hand dominant when they putt? I, I'm fascinated. It's across the board. I, I really, I, I always anticipate, well, he's playing golf right hand. His right hand's going to be his good hand. I never know. Sometimes it's his left hand. It's interesting that and a person. And how does that change the way you might teach? Well, I'm, I'm going to attack the bad hand, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm going to compliment or encourage the good hand. I'm going to have them understand what's going on with the good hand. Why is this so much easier? I mean, it's it's can't believe how many people I say, okay, let's putt with one hand. They're like, oh, I'm way better with one hand, you know. So I'm like, okay. And then sometimes they're good with both hands. I'm like, you got a choice. You, you're not going to get to go both handed, but you can go with either one. You know, that's kind of the joke. But you know, when when the bad hand doesn't know what to do, you know, my teaching style is very hands on. I'm going to reach in there. I'm going to grab his arm. I'm going to hold his elbow. I'm going to swing the putter for him have him get a sense of that's the direction you mean for me to go and change his feel. Okay. I remember a few years ago, Mike Holbert was putting on the PGA Tour. They called him the one-arm bandit. He was doing it. It was working. It, and it, it's, it's a very simple way to putt because, like I pointed out, you're really moving off one axis, and you're becoming very athletic. You know, my little drill uh, in showing people, you know, what they look like, a little exaggerated whenever they're put whenever they're putting with all shoulders it's mm -hmm. kind of like this you know it's like we toss a ball with our arm right. not with our shoulder i want to have a little bit of that in putting all right this is going to show us the swing arc that you like putting correct well there's there's or maybe a, i shouldn't use the term arc you well tell us. it it it's certainly going on a curve okay uh what i have here is is something i use to teach with it's got a plane on one side which I've chosen that tilt versus vertical to be at 68 degrees. I spend a lot of time during a lesson to make sure that when a player shows up, I want his putter to fit him. I think I, I find players who have fit themselves to some putter they bought off the rack. Well, that's kind of backwards. And I want to get to that in and a little so bit. And when, so when you swing with this teaching aid on the tilted side, well, as the, because it's tilted, as the putter goes back, it goes up. Well, as it goes up, it comes in. What's very curious is to turn them around and put that same tilt, but just put it in a straight line curve on this side. Well, all of a sudden, they just can't believe how much the stroke is supposed to swing end to end. And it also, it's, it's very helpful for a person who really gets caught up and they take it back good, but then they're so hole conscious that they swing toward the hole. Well, 
in golf because I'm over here and the ball's over there. The whole thing is around. Let's not forget about the follow through needs to go around and the face matches the curve on the follow through as well. All right, let me ask you one question about, uh, you see sometimes people take it back too far. Playing with somebody and say, man, you just take it back way too far. How far back? How far, far toward the hole do you go with the stroke, depending it, upon it, the it, distance? It's or interesting, what? and there's lots of styles to putt, okay? And I'm, I, my number one rule is, eh, if you shoot low, let's stick with that one, okay. okay? If you're coming and you're wondering how, my teaching method really has a pretty consistent follow-through. So the my length of my follow-through doesn't vary a great deal. The backswing always is is growing depending on how far the putt is. And so in, in a typical stroke, if I'm hitting a 15 or 20 footer, my backswing may be, you know, twice as big as my follow through. One of the reasons that the follow through, through stays pretty compact is when I follow through, my shoulders stay quiet. I believe that's important because they're a long ways from the end that hits the ball. This, this shoulders, which are so far from the putter head, shouldn't have a lot of motion. I mean, we, we watch Tiger Woods make all these putts. I mean, he kind of has a model stroke. You, you see him putt, he doesn't move one thing that isn't necessary to reach the hole with his effort. He's very efficient is what I call that. And so when I, when I follow through, my shoulders stay quiet. My stroke really ends as soon as my right arm lengthens because I'm not throwing the putter with my wrist. I'm not stopping it there on purpose, but that's a reaction to my right arm has released, just like in a golf shot, that's the end. I don't need to help it past that. All right, one more thing here. A lot of people go out to a practice putting green, and they want to work on this between the ears, confidence. Ola Thalba yesterday missed that one. Tiger had a few three putts. Phil Mickelson said the three putt got the best of him yesterday. What do you do to give people one tip that they can use? Is it to start a certain distance from the hole and make 100 of them? What do you, what do you think? Well, I'm a big fan Here's of ball, that. By the way. I'm a big fan of hitting putts, practice putts, not very far away to build your confidence. But one thing that's, I think, very important for people to start being aware of, we gather a lot of our feel from what contact sounds like. When you go to the, you know, I want people to go to the putting green and practice, listen for the contact. Occasionally, they're going to hit a solid one and begin to recognize that sounded really different. How do I find that sound on my putter face? The thing that I see the most of is that people, when, they, when their putter hits the ball, they're actually swinging up and the ball contacts the putter on the bottom. It doesn't hit up here high in the face or in the middle of the face when it hits the ball. So that'd be a good tip. Listen, find out what solid sounds like. A lot of times I remember seeing Nick Faldo in major championships under a lot of heat. Putter goes, his head's not going anywhere. He's listening for that ball to go in the hole. Listening perhaps also works for hearing what the solid he, stroke he's is. He's staying very still in those putts. All right.